Hi guys, welcome to our project lecture. Today we're going to be talking about all things projects, but before we get started, here are a few announcements. So first is our project kickoff event, which is the biggest event of the semester. Um, this year is going to be held in the SIF at 6.30 on September 15th, and we will have a hybrid event because of the rise of COVID cases. So you can either join on Zoom or you can join us in person, which we strongly recommend because there will be pizza, you'll get to meet your groups, etc. So it shall be really, really fun. Before the project kickoff, we wanted to release a project interest form so that you can put down your project interest interests. Um, and this will be filled out September 11th. Um, and Raina will talk more about how to fill this out later. Another homework that we're going to be releasing is the project idea homework, and this is totally distinct from the project interest form. This will just allow you to flesh out some ideas that you might have before you meet your groups so that the project brainstorming process as a group is more seamless. And to stay updated on our events, such as the project kickoff, um, we provided a, a Google Calendar so that you can embed it into your own schedule. And yeah. Yeah, so some goals for today. First, we're gonna break down popular project categories and explain them kind of just on a high level. So we have web development, mobile development, game development, and data science. We'll also explain the concept of a tech stack and walk you through the matching form. And then we will talk about projects. So we'll have inspiration from past projects that we will be having in every single category and then walk you through how to actually come up with a project idea. And as Rachel mentioned, flesh it out so that when you get together in your groups, you will be able to actually get started a lot sooner. And then we'll kind of talk you through the project weekly workflow. So project categories. The first is web development. Web development just re refers to the building, creating, and maintaining of websites. So this encapsulates web design, web publishing, web programming, and database management. You can also split up web development into front end and back end development. Front end or client side is actually what's seen by the user and what users interact with. On the other hand, back end or server side is not seen by the user and this stores and arranges the data. The two are then connected so that they have, so you have information and users can interact with it, the actual site and then taken together, this is sometimes called full stack development. Mobile development is next. So we'll be focusing on non-web mobile applications um, for this category, just, just to keep it distinct from what we we're talking about with web development. So first category is native apps. So native apps are written in the programming languages and frameworks that are provided by the actual platform owners and they're run directly on the operating system of the device. So say like iOS or Android. Um, on the other hand, cross-platform apps are written in different programming languages and frameworks, but then they're compiled into the native application running directly on the operating system of the actual device. For mobile development, we have the same concepts of front-end and back-end that we mentioned in web development. And it's just, you know, used on your phone. Yeah, so in the next category is game development, which you guys are probably familiar with, um, like Tumble Run, I don't know, Doodle Jump, et cetera. Game development is just the art of creating a game and is typically broken down into both designing the game, developing it, and then maybe finally releasing the game. To create the game, we recommend you to use game engines like Unity or Unreal. Um, this just makes the entire process easier and allows you to render for 2D and 3D graphics as well as physics and collision detections and so much more. Um, instead of having to write your own libraries to handle maybe two balls hitting each other, you can just simply call a function on this on these game engines and have it done for you. The final category is data science, which general purpose is to extract value from data. And for our purposes, we've broken it down into two categories. The first one is machine learning and deep learning. Deep learning is just a subset of machine learning, but it is a field devoted to sort of building methods to allow a computer to learn how to do tasks using data. And it can be seen under the general umbrella of artificial intelligence. Data analytics is a little bit different. Um, if in stats class you've done like finding the mean or finding the max of a data set before, that's sort of a more data analytics approach. And it's just summarizing data in a meaningful and descriptive way. So sometimes you might want to visualize data um, and we'll show you some examples in our upcoming slides. 
Now that we've talked about the technical categories, we are going to explain the concept of a tech stack. So you don't want to reinvent the wheel and build everything from scratch because that is a bit of a waste of time when there are so many tools out there already for you to use. So instead, you're going to combine and integrate a number of tools, applications and services for different features to actually build your entire product. We have a document outlining some common tools that are used in the course in the various categories that we've already mentioned. This is just a starting point. You do want to do some original research on your own so that you could figure out you know exactly what would be ideal for the project that you want to do and you're definitely not constrained by what we have listed and you probably won't be able to build everything you want to with just what we have that's just you know again a jumping off point and from there you can add any number of tools to uh, make your project better and better yeah um, next, I'll talk a little bit about the project matching form. So as Rachel mentioned, this is what's going to put you in your actual groups and match you with PMs with similar interests. As a result, it's really important that you fill this out correctly. So we have two main kind of things that we're matching you by. It's your interests in like technical interests and then your general interests. And for both of these, you're going to rank um, your choices from first, second, third, and fourth. So it'll say first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice. And then that's different from here where you actually rate your interests. So one is least interested and five is most interested. Please don't flip these because if you do, then you might end up in a group where you're really not interested in the subject and we don't want that. So, you know, make sure you read the instructions thoroughly. And that's why I'm reminding you here as well. Um, for the technical categories, we have the same ones that we just went over, web development, mobile development, machine learning and data analytics, and then game development. Um, for the more general categories and topics that you might be doing for actual app, because, you know, just a, a technical category is not enough to come up with an idea. You actually have to have some kind of subject matter that you, and some kind of problem that you're addressing, right? So we have entertainment, education, and the health and wellness, social good, finance, campus related, and productivity. So all of those different things combined with your technical interests can make some really, really cool products. Mm -hmm. And to help you brainstorm for these products, um, here is some project inspo. And this can be found on our Hall of Fame on our CS124 website, where we immortalize the best in projects. So maybe yours will end up here too. So in terms of web apps, we have two right here. First is the health tracking app, which allows you to track the number of hours you slept every single day, as well as when you woke up. And a food social media app, which I wish I could use um, because in Champagne, there's not much else to do. Um, but this is just Instagram, but for food. For past projects, in terms of mobile apps, there's a recycling app as well as a borrowing slash lending app. And when you're thinking about what kind of projects you want to do, just think about how would you use your product. So if you would use it on maybe Google, um, we would probably recommend you to create a web app versus if it's a game, maybe a mobile app will work better. For games, here are two as well. The first is a 2D level-based game. The first one we've shown in our info session, but it allows you to, to transition from a 2D view into a 3D view. And the coin collector game is exactly that, but it's really cool. You can move your character around and collect all the coins you want. In terms of data science, we've chosen um, one from each category. So first is machine learning. This is a movie recommendation engine that will offer you different outputs based on the emotions and audio recordings. And then for data analytics, we have a climate change data visualization. There are also ways to combine different groups, um, and most a lot of our like most innovative apps tend to do this. Here are two examples that combine two different categories. The first is a music app for senior citizens suffering from dementia, and the second one is an ASL learning game, which utilizes both web development as well as machine learning. Yeah, so now that you've seen all these project ideas, how do you come up with your own? Um, so coming up with a project idea, it is tempting to just start with a summary and say, this is the project that I want to do. But usually that's not the best starting point because, you know, like what is the project even going to be on? So you really want to start with what problem would this project solve? So I'm going to be walking through kind of how to fill out this form from the perspective of the one of the 
the projects shown on the previous slide, the American Sign Language Learning Game. So to start with the problem, there is a communication barrier between people who understand ASL and people who don't understand ASL. And um, our group social uh, for social good wanted to foster increased communication between these different populations. Um, so then the next thing would be, okay, what features would make up this product in order to address those specific issues. So um, in order to do that first, the webcam would have to be opened and then the user's hands would have to be identified and then whatever sign that they're doing, that had to be identified as well. And then we had them allow, allow users to enter data sets and train a model using machine learning algorithms. And then finally to play that dance dance revolution type game to practice signing letters in real time in front of a camera. So in order to implement each of these features, then you would need to find the technologies to do that. And this question on the homework is optional, but since we do have our tech stack guide, it'd be a good time to actually start looking into some of the tools that you might want to use. Um, especially if, you know, a lot of people in your group are interested in web development, even if you know, you don't choose your idea, maybe you'll be able to actually pull ideas from like actual the tech stack you're using because of the features that you want to implement could be similar across, you know, project ideas. So here you could see a lot of these technologies correspond directly to the actual features that make up this product. Once you have all those things figured out, then you can actually summarize the product that you're doing and you know, maybe even name the project. So this project was actually named Sign Sign Revolution, like Dance Dance Revolution. And it is a Python program that helps users learn and translate American Sign Language through computer vision technologies integrated with a Dance Dance Revolution type game. So after you have all those pieces, you could put them together into an actual idea. And that's really exciting because, you know, you really are not limited at all in what you choose to do. And you have a lot of creative freedom here. Mm -hmm. Next is the workflow. So we'll be going over a general concept as well as the type we're gonna implement in this course. So we'll be using the Agile um, framework for this course and Agile can typically be split into two components, which is Scrum and Kanban. Agile is just basically the process of taking a larger task and breaking it down into smaller tasks. And um, we'll be going into the two components in our next slide. Scrum is an ag agile method um, and is typically split into time limited sprints for maybe about a week long um, where tasks are typically assigned to individuals. And as you can see, it's more of a cycle every single week. So at the very beginning, you're going to be planning, um, then implementing whatever you've planned, reviewing what you've implemented, and then sort of reflecting on it and using that knowledge to fuel the next cycle. This is typically reviewed by the PM and it just helps you break a project into smaller components in cycles until you have finally completed it. For Kanban, um, there's a more visual component, I would say. Kanban is a more free form methodology where tasks are shared between people. So as you can see, there are columns uh, for to-do and progress, pending review, et cetera. And um, you can share tasks between people and people can see like where everyone else is at. In this course, we'll be implementing sort of like a mix between all of these, which Reina will explain in the next section. Yeah, so we're going to be talking a little bit about how we're going to be using GitHub in this course. Your project managers will go into this in more depth with you and, you know, you'll have help. So this is not the only thing that you're going to see. And, you know, um, this is a little bit different from our Git videos because that just walks you through how to actually use a tool. But this is specifically for your project. So looking at the repository structure, we have a docs directory, a project directory, a research directory, a get ignore, and then a readme. The readme will just have basic information about your group, group number, team name, um, net IDs of your PM, and then net, net, IDs, net ID of your PM and net IDs of your group members, mm -hmm. and then your MVP link. So MVP is minimum viable product, and it's just kind of what the minimal amount of things you need to call your project what it is. I, I know that sounds a little weird, but basically all you're doing is what you do in your project idea homework, just in more detail after you actually come up with the project that you want to do as a group. 
Um, your docs folder will hold documentation like your plan and run MDs. The plan is just kind of a general plan for how you want to implement different things over the course of the semester. And this can be adapted and changed as you go because, you know, it's really hard to estimate how long different things take and you are still learning a lot of the tools that you're going to be using. So things take more time, that's okay, and it could be adjusted along the way. And then the run MD will just walk through all the different technologies you're using and how to actually run your project. Um, in the project directory, as the name suggests, that's where your actual project is going to go. And then to begin with, at the beginning, your research, the research directory will be where you're concentrating most of your work. There will be individual directories, subdirectories with your net IDs on them where you could put any research that you're doing. So this can be like, you know, just like a text file with some of like the research that you've done online, or you could have, you know, tutorials where you're walking through something following along with a video online so that you really get yourself familiar with the different technologies and putting it in the research folder means that the rest of you know the repository doesn't get all cluttered. Now onto the Kanban board. So as Rachel mentioned, we are doing work in sprints and these are gonna be week, uh, with the exception of sprint zero, the are gonna be about a week long. And at the beginning of the week, you'll, at your weekly meeting, your project manager will be assigning you tasks. So um, this will be done likely synchronously and you'll have stuff in the to-do column first. So your PM will add kind of tasks and they'll show up on little cards and they'll have the, the task and then it can be assigned to one or more people, whatever you're assigned, that's your responsibility for the next week. And if it ends up taking you longer, then you just have to communicate with your PM. Um, don't leave things like blank and not move anything on the board because then your PM won't know what's going on and your other group members won't know what's going on. So, you know, communication is really big here. Once you're starting the task, you move it from to do to in progress. And then once you've completed the task and it's ready for review, you move it under pending review. And then that's when your PM will take a look at it. So if you make any pull requests and stuff, your PM take a look and then merge it in if it's all good. And then that's when they would move it to review in progress. And once they're done, then the task is resolved and you can move on to the next thing. So you'll have a different board for each sprint or each week that you're gonna be working on the project and you'll be able to track your progress that way. Yeah, so just to recap, we went over some popular project categories that correspond to our interest pods. So, you know, if any of these really appeal to you, even if you don't end up doing a project in this category, or you, if you do something in multiple categories, you can join whatever ones you want. Um, we'll have an announcement later in the Discord where you can actually react to um, the message and then it'll add you to the roles that you need in order to access the channels um, for each of the interest pods. And there'll be places where you can communicate um, via voice chat or text chat, share resources, you know, just generally things that you might want to talk about in those areas. And then there'll be PMs there as well. So, you know, if you if you have any questions, it might be their area of expertise and they might be able to help you out or other students who might be doing something similar. So you'll have nice like little communities within the course um, for these specific interests. We also went through some of the past projects to give you a little bit of inspiration. You could do something similar, you could do something completely new and, you know, the more creative and innovative and novel, like, you know, the better because that way you could do something that like you really care about and that you really are interested in. And, you know, you think like, this is a problem that I have and I really want to solve for people like me as well. Um, and then we walk through, you know, how to actually come up with a project idea and how to actually develop it so that it's ready to be shared with others. And then, you know, you could actually take it and put it into reality and actually make it. Um, and then in order to do that, we talked about how the weekly workflow is going to look. And again, you know, this will be described to you in more detail when you actually get put into your groups. But we really hope that this helps you get started on your projects and that you're really excited for our project kickoff because we'll see you there. Yay.